Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Digging Deeper, moment number 155. The mission of our Digging Deeper moments is to take God's Word to God's world, and we are so glad that you've joined us, and we hope that before watching tonight's lesson, you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, which will help us take messages like this to others. Now, in our last Digging Deeper moment, number 154, we finished looking at the seven Hebrew words that make up Genesis 1-1, which says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the Hebrew, it's Bereshit bara Elohim eight Hashemayim wa eight Haaretz. Now, as we looked at these seven words, we discovered that Genesis 1:1 is telling us that the first thing God created was the heavens and the earth, and that the creation of the heavens and the earth was not a process, but it was a one-time act. The complete word study of the Old Testament by Zodiati states that the word create, that's the word bara, is in the call perfect, which means simple perfective action that is seen as a whole. The Logos Bible software says bara is kal katal, that's perfect, which sees the action of the verb as a whole and complete without reference to the time of the action. In other words, it's not telling you when it did it, it's just telling the type of action, which means it was a one-time act. That's pretty clear in the Hebrew. So in other words, the creation of the heavens and the earth was completed in a singular act. And tonight, we're going to begin looking at Genesis 1-2, and what we'll see in this series is what, that while the heavens and the earth were created in a one-time act by God, as stated in Genesis 1-1, God originally created the heavens and the earth, unformed, unfilled, and unfinished. And the forming, filling, and finishing of the heavens and the earth was not a one-time act, but was a process which took place over the rest of the six days of creation week, which we'll see. Therefore, on day one of the creation week, the first thing God created was the heavens and the earth. But that's not all He created on day one, as we'll see, but this is all that verse 1 tells us He created. The New King James translation of Genesis 1-2 then reads, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The first Hebrew word of verse 2 is wahaaretz. It's actually a compound word consisting of the conjunction and, that's the sound wa, the definite article the, which is the sound ha, and then the Hebrew word for land, which is aretz. Literally, it means, and the land. So verse 2 actually begins, and the land. Now, in verse 1, we saw that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we saw that the subject of verse 1 is God. He's the one doing the action. He's the one doing the creating. And the verse, very first thing He did was, was to create the heavens and the earth, what we call the universe. But in verse 2, the subject changes. Whereas verse 1 speaks of God creating the heavens and the earth, verse 2 focuses on the condition of the earth when God originally created it. Verse 2 begins like verse 1, with a noun instead of a verb. And as we saw in our last series, Hebrew sentences usually start with a verb. But when Hebrew wants to emphasize something, it puts the noun first, which it does in verse 1 and in verse 2. In verse 1 it says, in the beginning, and this is why it comes first, to emphasize in the beginning. And verse 2 says, and or now the earth was. But not just the earth, it's the condition of the earth when God originally and initially created it. Now, some have proposed that Genesis 1-2 should be read as, and the earth became formless and void, instead of the earth was formless and void. And they do this to teach something called the gap theory. The gap theory is a major theory, which we'll look at in another series, of how people want to interpret and apply the book of Genesis. But what we find is that while the word was can mean become in the Hebrew language, it cannot mean that here according to Hebrew grammar. The words, and the earth was without form and void, is what is called a noun clause. A clause is a group of words that contain a subject and a verb. It's kind of like a miniature sentence. In Hebrew, a noun clause refers to something that is fixed and not something in progress. This means that the word for was has to mean was here, and it cannot mean became. So those that propose the gap theory, which we'll talk about later, they cannot use this word was as became to substantiate that. Weston Fields writes, in Unformed and Unfilled, there can be no doubt then, at least as far as recognized grammarians are concerned, that Genesis 1-2, the first clause, that he said Genesis 1-2a, that's the first clause, which was, is a noun clause. In general, the emphatic word of a noun clause is placed first, as it is in Genesis 1-2. The word earth is first in the sentence, telling the reader the concern of this verse is the earth. Therefore, he translates the beginning of verse 2 as now, as far as the earth was concerned, it was. So, Genesis 1-1 tells us that the first thing God cr created was He created the heavens and the earth in a one-time act. The first word of verse 2 tells us, because the subject has changed from the creation of the heavens and the earth to the, con to the condition of the earth when it was created. Now, when God created the earth, 
it was. And this is where we'll have to pick it up next week. If this lesson has helped you, please share it with a friend, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or check out our Sunday morning live podcast on either Apple or Spotify. And if you'd like to partner with us as we take God's Word to God's world, you can do so by going to our website and clicking the How to Give tab. I hope to see you next week.